Okay, next I'm going to talk about building a robot. So I took a piece of cardboard, uh, corrugated cardboard, and I just simply laid out where I thought a good place for the motors and the wheels would go. I cut a couple of holes for the wheels. Those are those parts that are being passed around, and I traced it with a marker. And I said, okay, that'll be about right. And I'm going to make a wedge design so that it's the kind where you have a wedge-shaped body, so it gets underneath the other robot. And it's a very, very simple design. There's not a whole lot to it. I did uh, trim the front edge so that it can get under stuff a little bit better. And again, you only need two motors to drive your robot. Uh, and I'm not using car steering. Car steering turns out to be much more complicated than just using two motors. This kind of a drive system with two motors is often called tank steering or tank, a tank drive. I don't have tracks like a tank, but it's just two wheels. This is also called differential steering because to steer, you just speed up one motor and slow down the other one. And so it just the difference in the, in the speed of the two motors will cause it to turn. So if I wanted to go forward and turn to the left a little bit, I just make both motors go forward, make this one go a little bit faster, and so it'll turn to the left. Real simple. So now pull these shafts off. And I'm going to add something called, I believe the mechanical engineering term is a pillow block. It'll work great. I'm going to cut one in half. I'm going to put it right where I want the... Uh... So I'm going to stick that guy on there. I just need to get it stuck in line where the axle is going to be. And then I'll get the other one where the other pillow block will go. And what I, the reason I'm using these little pillow blocks is it'll support the axle because if, if the axle is sticking out from the motor, here's a real common mistake a lot of people, including me, make. Mechanical engineers know not to do this, but that's, I took a couple classes in mechanical engineering. It's not my strongest skill set. If you have the motor here grabbing the end of the... Uh, end of the axle and the, and the wheel is out here and then the weight of the motor is here, it's going to want to bend the axle. So what you need is to put the weight of the motor on both sides of the axle and then that way the wheel won't want to fall one way or the other and it won't tear your motor out or destroy the gears in your motor as has happened to many of my robots. So I'll just, in this case, I'll just slide the shaft through there, I'm sliding the shaft through and I'll get it into the motor. Now there are a lot of things I would do to improve this that I'm not going to do today just due to time constraints. Like I would use some, um, golly, I forget what they're called, but it's a, uh, a ring that goes around here with a set screw so that the shaft won't pull out. Because if I actually use this for long enough, it might be five minutes, ten minutes, but eventually that shaft is going to wiggle its way out and the wheel's going to fall off and, you know, it'll be a mess and I'll lose the contest and all my teammates will be disappointed in me because I didn't put a retaining uh, device on there. So, for actual competitions, I would do a lot more, but for getting a simple robot running, this will be good. So now I've got two motors, two wheels. I would also position some um, collars or spacers on here to keep the wheels centered. I really won't want them rubbing against the robot body. So right now we have the basic wedge shape, which is probably the most popular shape for a robot, for a robot sumo. And again, it's because you want to get underneath the other robot, and if you can lift it up, and its wheels aren't touching the ground, you pretty much, you've almost won the match, if they have no traction. So, there's so many other interesting things about Robot Sumo too, because there's also autonomous Robot Sumo, which we're not really going to have time to talk about, but you could have sensors, uh, ultrasonic sensors, infrared sensors, and so on, to detect the other robot and have the robot look for it. You also need light sensors. That underneath looking down so if you drive out of the ring it'll back up and come back into the ring. Um, that's a whole nother topic unto itself. So now we need a uh, radio receiver and I just happen to have one along with some uh, wiring and I'm going to stick that guy on. Usually I attach radio receivers with Velcro that way I can swap the receivers. I also use Velcro for my batteries typically because that way I can swap radio components and batteries between model airplanes and robots. So 
I'm just going to stick one there for the radio receiver. This is going to be a horrible mess of wires. Again, for a real robot, you'd want to clean up the wiring a bit, especially for a competition, because if you have loose wires dangling out like that, they're going to get unplugged. They're going to snag something on another robot and get unplugged, and then you're, and then you're in trouble. So you wouldn't want that to happen. So now I'm going to attach the wires from the motors to the receiver, trying not to plug them in backwards, which I've done many times, but luckily these guys don't burn up. I am going to use a zip tie, though, just to clean up these wires a bit so they're not all over the place. Zip ties are awesome for cleaning up your wires. Some of my friends who do this will actually trim the wires and put new connectors on them to make the wires the exact length that they want. I'm not that uh, detail-oriented. And then I'll trim the end off. So now we have the radio receiver. We have the motors hooked up to it. This is a connector. I, I kludged together an adapter for one of my batteries. And I'm just going to zip tie this battery on. Again, I'd want it to maybe be a little bit cleaner if uh, I was going to compete with this guy. But um, I'm just going to make a little space there so I can slip the zip tie through. There we go. And I'll just put that battery there, zip tie it down, trim the end off. I need a transmitter, so I'm going to turn on the transmitter. And this is one of those cheapo transmitters, which are awesome. And uh-oh, look at that. Got a problem. Anyone tell me what's wrong? Exactly. The center of gravity is too far in the back. The, it's popping a wheelie now. The front end is going up. That would not be very good for getting that wedge underneath of another robot. So I'm going to have to move something heavy, like the battery, forward. Well, that'll be easy to do, as long as I don't. There we go. So now I'll just, let's see. I'm going to estimate where I can put that battery where it won't hit the ground. I think right about there would be good. So I'm going to try that. I'm going to make a couple of holes. By the way, part of the fun of this is just experimenting and trying stuff. You can tell I'm just trying stuff. And I'm not afraid to waste a couple of pieces uh, making a mistake. And as you saw with that little radio control car, you can even use cardboard, which is usually uh, pretty easy to get a hold of for building stuff. So your mistakes don't even really cost anything. So let's slide that zip tie through there. Put it here. So now, let's see. OK, great, it sits. I have, so it's moving around. So let's see. There's something on these radios that's called mixing. <clears throat> right now, if I move the stick up and down, it's only controlling one motor. If I move it side to side, it's only controlling the other motor. I'll pick it up and show you. So if I move the stick up, only one motor is moving. I move the stick down, that motor goes the other way. If I move the stick to one side, that motor's moving. Move it the other side, it moves the other way. What I really need is to mix those two channels. That's what it's called in radio-controlled hobbies and uh, robotics. Luckily, these radios come with a switch. All I have to do is slide it. So now, when I move the stick up, both motors should go, and they do. When I move it down, they both go. When I move it side to side, they both go. That's good. So now, when I push this, I ha and I'll have to just try different combinations. There are also switches on here where you can reverse the directions of the motors. Because if I push it forward, let's see which way. Oh, it's actually going forward. That's, that's a nice coincidence. So it's actually going forward and back. That's awesome. If I turn it to the right, or if I push the stick to the right, I want it to turn to the right. That is a complete coincidence. This never happens. So I just got lucky on that. Usually, I'll have to reverse one or two of the switches to make a, one of the motors go the other way. So right now, we have, we're going to, we actually have a functioning robot. And if the axles haven't fallen out again. So 
if this was a contest, it would go to the other robot and, you know, push it out of the ring. So um, that's it. It actually is working. <laughs>